The beautiful country of Myanmar is rich in scenic and ethnic diversity. Fertile lowlands with their lush green rice paddies give rise to majestic limestone mountains. The second largest country in Southeast Asia, Myanmar shares borders with Bangladesh, India, China, Laos and Thailand. Over 100 distinct ethnic groups, each with their own language, make up an estimated population of 55 million people. With an underdeveloped educational system, the people of Myanmar lack the skills to compete in sectors of modern technology, trade or commerce. The majority of the people live in rural areas where they are subsistence farmers or may work as casual day labourers in the textile industry or on farms producing export crops such as rice, cotton, tobacco and rubber. Average incomes are about £170 a year, making it one of the poorest nations in Southeast Asia. In 1985, the Adventist Development and Relief Agency was established one year later, ADRA officially began managing programs in Myanmar and is one of the oldest, most established non-governmental organizations working in the country. Given their excellent reputation, ADRA Myanmar has had permission to work in areas of the country where many other organizations have not. ADRA UK began supporting relief and development programs in Myanmar in 2005. The primary focus of activity has been in a region of the country that has become known as the dry zone of Myanmar. Located just across the Irrawaddy River from the popular tourist site of Bagan, this region has experienced decreasing rainfall over the last 30 years. The people living here face extreme challenges as they attempt to meet the basic necessities of life. Not able to grow enough food in the dry, sandy soil, parents find it difficult to provide adequate nutrition for their families. Children often quit school early so they can work as day labourers on large plantations in the hot sun to help support their families. Average pay for a full day in the field is about one pound. In 2006, ADRA UK funded a program of vocational training to give people alternative methods of income to working in the fields. As part of the program, people learned new skills such as sewing, carpentry, small engine mechanics and food processing. Building on the success of this initial training, a follow-up programme was launched in 2012 that was funded by UK Aid, the British Government's Department for International Development, as well as with funds from ADRA UK. This programme was designed to help both individuals and groups use their new food processing skills to produce products for larger markets than just their own community. With the relationship and trust that ADRA had established with village leaders and participants, it was decided that this follow-up initiative would be proposed to the same 15 communities as the previous programme. The proposition was received with great enthusiasm and ADRA began conducting integrated training programmes that are teaching new food processing techniques as well as introducing new products and recipes. Organised into self-help groups, participants are taught important business skills such as accounting, networking and marketing. 
At the regular meetings, people learn how to manage their personal finances. Participants start savings programs to help them prepare for family emergencies and expand their business. After extensive training, each member is given a set of food processing equipment, including a solar food dryer and food packaging materials to get them started. As a member of the self-help group, they are also able to access small capital grants to help them get some of the extra tools that they may need to get started or better manage their monthly purchase of supplies. With all of this training, encouragement and support from their teachers and their fellow group members, people are developing a new confidence in themselves as they establish their own small business right out of their homes. As part of the program, ADRA has conducted training sessions to impart important information on social issues such as human rights, issues of gender, health and nutrition, HIV and AIDS, disaster risk reduction and environmental protection. In addition to the self-help groups, where individuals set up small food processing operations from their homes, 10 communities were selected to form cooperatives called Household Producer Labour Groups. The purpose of these groups was to establish a rural collective enterprise where they could use the larger capacity to process greater quantities of product to access larger, more distant markets. Villages were selected based not only on their interest in the programme, but also their ability to provide land for a building that would have access to water and electricity. At each stage of the process, participants engaged in the planning, design and construction of the new building, as well as the nature and type of food processing they would engage in. While ADRA provided building materials and expertise, Village participants in the programme provided labour and other sweat equity to their new centre. Once the building was complete, the next step was the installation of the food processing equipment. ADRA provided for the purchase and installation of all the primary items needed to get the new food company started. With training provided by the manufacturers and distributors of the new equipment, it didn't take long for the group members to take over the operation and start producing products. Taking food that has grown locally, these new entrepreneurs are processing delicious food items such as baked goods, rice noodles, spaghetti, peanuts and other snacks. Some of the groups have chosen to produce peanut oil. Others have found a good market for various products that can be made from a locally grown plum fruit, including a much sought after extract from the plum seeds. Working together, team members take their products through the various stages, from the raw form all the way to packaging and labeling. step is to get the items to market. Often this means transporting them on the back of motorcycles that the group has purchased with their cooperative profits. Some of the packages are distributed locally to stores and shops close to the villages. However, with the success of the program, some groups are now delivering to markets on the other side of the river. Future plans include expanding distribution to some of the larger cities, such as Mandalay and even Yangon. As part of the programme, ADRA has sponsored participants to attend trade fairs in the cities to develop a larger network of clients. Our group makes snacks that we can sell in the local markets. We make onion crackers, fish-flavoured crackers and tamarind toffee. 
We get the raw materials at harvest time when the prices are really low. And then we process the food in the way that Adra showed us. The crackers have to go through several stages of flattening, cooking, and drying. We use the solar dryer as the last step. We then cut them into strips before packaging them up. It's nice to work as a group. We have the opportunity to not only work together with our friends, but also solve our problems as a group. Each of us have strengths that help us face challenges better together. I used to work out in the fields. Because the sun gets so hot, it was hard to put in a full day. I would make about half a pound a day, and even then it was only seasonal work. I really like this a lot better. In the shade of our new building, we can work all day long, all year long. I am working here together with my friends, and the best part is, it's our own business. The profits that we make are shared equally among the group or invested back into our enterprise to help it grow. In the future, we hope to really build up our business through expanding our markets, improving our brand image, and improving the quality of our products. I have always dreamed of starting my own business, and that is one of the reasons why I joined this group. Together we are starting up this food processing business right here in our own village. One of my responsibilities is to find new markets for our products. I do this by attending trade fairs, festivals, and visiting shop owners in our region. I am also the one to deliver the products to the shops. I use the motorbike that we have purchased with the micro savings of our group. One of our big markets is on the other side of the Irrawaddy River. There is no bridge where we are, so we must cross the river in a small boat. I then deliver the products to our clients in the market. As I make my stops, I do quick interviews with the shopkeepers to get feedback on how they like our products and what they are hearing from their customers. I really enjoy talking to the shopkeepers and I am working hard to build up our clientele. We have two self-help groups in our village with a total of 30 members. The two groups share the same HPLG building, machinery and facilities. We have divided up the work week into three shifts where each member is working about two days a week. We make bread, cakes, fried chips, fish crackers, and tamarind toffee. We chose these particular products because there was a real demand for them in our village. Whenever there was a wedding, festival, or other celebration in the area, people had to go a very long distance to buy these things. Now they can get them right here at home. Sales have been very good. So far, we have been able to sell everything that we produce. Working here, we make about 50 cents for every day we work. We were able to make more doing casual labor in the fields, but we prefer this kind of work. First of all, the agricultural work in this region only lasts four months of the year, so the income is very seasonal. In our factory, we are able to work year-round. Secondly, it is very nice to be able to work inside, out of the sun, as a group of friends. We are all working together toward the same goal, to make our small business succeed. We have all learned a lot in this process, and we have grown closer together. Adra has really changed our lives. First of all, they provided us with a lot of training. We went to many seminars where we learned how to run a small business. Adra then encouraged us to learn new skills so that we could start a small food processing industry right from our homes. After taking all of the classes, Adra provided us with food processing equipment to get us started. We have been very successful. We used to have a very hard life and struggled a lot, working out in the hot sun, trying to get enough money to feed our children. Now, thanks to what Adra has done for us, we are working in the shade. We have lots of customers and we are able to sell everything that we make. With our profits, we have been able to build a more comfortable home and we have plenty to eat. I wish to thank all of the sponsors and supporters of Adra that have helped make these programs possible for me and my friends living here in the dry zone. Thank you so very much. Adra has been working here in the dry zone since 2005. The programs have had a real positive impact on the whole region. 
As you talk to the people who have participated in the programs, you get a real sense for how much these programs have changed their lives. Many of them have told me that they never dreamed that they would ever be able to work for themselves in their own business. Because they never had the opportunity to go to high school or learn a trade, they believed that they would have to spend the rest of their lives working as day laborers for someone else. Now, because of the training that they have received from ADRA, they are able to work at home or with one of the groups. Now they have better opportunities to support their families. They have the security of year-long work with steady incomes. Now, the harder they work, the more income they can make. All of this builds self-confidence, pride and satisfaction. Through programs like this that encourage personal growth and community development, people's lives are forever changed. With short training programs, a little capital, some product ideas, and some basic equipment, people are started down a road of financial independence and the personal reward of self-sufficiency.